Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another leftover episode of the Gold Standard with Alan Mosley. And here's your host, Alan Mosley. Look how shiny that is. Shiny. Like, I have to turn it to the side so that there's not a glowing bar on. Oh, it's a nice tie, you know. I, I like this tie. It's just that it's it's too sh- it's got sheen. Sheen. So it's you have sheen. The light is. <laughs> Your sheen. It doesn't. I'm, I'm going to have to wear a dark colored tie <laughs> next week. Dark colored ties. Yeah, but that was like, that was not boring, you know? Everybody wears boring ties. What are you trying to say? It's not a boring tie. Well, are you trying to say my other one's boring? No, I'm saying that one's sheeny. All right. <laughs> I, can't, I can't even talk to you. Guys, thank you so much for tuning in for another episode of The Gold Standard. I am your host, Alan Mosley. If you want to follow me on social media, you can do so at facebook.com slash TGS Alan Mosley. Drop me a line to let you know, let me know what you think of the show, and we'll just ban you real quick. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter, which is at Alan M. Mosley. But you don't have to do any of that, because you can just go to our website, which is thegoldstandardpodcast.com. That's right. You know, we're on, get this, uh-huh. we're on YouTube. Yes. Stitcher, yeah, iTunes, iTunes, Google Play, yeah, tune in, tune in, and also the videos are now going directly to Facebook. That's really cool. Yeah, yeah. Which means that people can actually like them and mm-hmm. share them with all of their friends because sharing is very important to us. Really, this is what this is what everybody should do. Everybody, listen at home. This is this. Here's what you do. You you go to Facebook and you find the post for the new episode. Yep, and you like it. Uh huh. And then you comment saying "ha ha" or whatever. Whatever. And then you click the share button yep. and you share it to everybody. That's right. And then, and then all of those people, what they do is they go to the goldstandardpodcast.com. dot mm-hmm. They click on the donate button in yep. the top right corner, and then you put in all your money, and then you click send. <laughs> I see what you did there. And that's that's what you do. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. I think that's a PayPal link. We also have a Patreon, <laughs> but the Patreon is under construction again oh boy. because we're getting ready to debut a really cool like trailer for our network yeah, little L productions we are. certainly yeah so that so so in the meantime i know what you're thinking is well alan i was going to give you a million dollars but only via patreon <laughs> but you can you can do it on our website if you go click That's on right. the donate button which is the gold standard podcast.com right yeah very good so did you watch any of the state of the union last night no i slept good call yeah yeah you didn't yeah. you didn't really miss anything yeah. um I've been seeing a lot of people cheering about it, but, you know, I mean... You know what I forgot to do? What did you forget to do? I forgot to pull up our meme of the week. Oh, okay. Do you so, have it on you? So, what we need to do then is we need for... I need to say something, and uh-huh. then you need to comment. Yes. And then when you're commenting, you switch the camera to you. Okay. And while you're doing that, I'm going to be real quick. Okay. All right. Or, Ready? Or, okay. So okay. I, so, okay. I need to say something. Okay, so, say something. So, Blake, how's the weather? Well, it's raining outside, and uh, there was a bird chirping just a few minutes ago, which I guess means the rain stopped. So, uh, I don't know. I don't know. If you guys uh, ever hear in the background of our studio, it's always very loud in here. But, uh, you know, Wait, whatever. Oh, here my you. God. So, fa- so, Firefox is installing updates right now. <laughs> <laughs> right what, what is this train wreck? <laughs> this, is, this is not... This is not. Why am I even? Why am I why, bothering? Why, why bother? Why yeah. do we bother? Why am I wearing a suit? I don't what, know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know why I'm doing anything. Because the tie is sheeny. That's why it's a yeah. sheeny tie. Yeah. Well, I do. I do like having my laptop here on the desk though, because yes. it's kind of like my shield. Right. It makes from, you feel more confident. From just, you know, musicians. Musicians are like that because we're yeah. like that. I, yeah. I actually brought my guitar to have as a prop, and then for yeah, like the yeah, third week in a row, I didn't bring it. It's been it sitting up here. in the control room. Yeah, it's been dust, sitting yeah. in the. Yeah. I don't, I don't know why I even bother. Uh, I don't. That's that's the that's the slogan for this episode. Is I don't know why I even bother. <laughs> Um, <laughs> That's what we should have named it, right? <laughs> no, I wanted to pull up the meme of the week because it's, the week. Re- it's related to the the State of the Union. Good. Um, no, not no, not no. Good. Well, it's, no, I'm saying it's good that the meme is related to the State of the Union, not the State of the Union. Yeah. Who cares about the state? Yeah. Right. Exactly. Exactly. I just I just wanted to pull up. It's not really. I I know that there's some associated images and stuff, but I really I I don't really care to show the image. Uh, this was this right here. It's it's ready. This was a tweet okay. from Being a Libertarian uh, the other night, where they said, "Did you see all the ladies and stuff dressed in white at the State of the Union?" Now, so all I know, the yeah, all I know the Democrats about that. all yeah. showed up dressed in white. Yeah, I, I know about that. Yeah. yeah and so Being a Libertarian, stupid. they go, "I haven't seen so many Democrats wear white since they started the KKK." <laughs> 
<laughs> that is spicy and <laughs> yeah. correct. Yeah, and they don't even need hoods. You know, it's amazing. The the best. See, this is the thing: is that something isn't spicy just because it's offensive, yeah, or even necessarily clever or right. wordplay or whatever. What makes it spicy is that you read it and you know that it's going to trigger people, but it's it's because there's truth to it. Yeah, that's what makes it. What yeah, it is. it's true. It's true. I've seen the images of all of the women sitting there with the white outfits on, and it just kind of conjures up like, yeah, wow, you know, yeah. So I've I've so I've seen the people who really draw the like the people who don't use words. They Mm. let pictures tell the story, and they just have all of them wearing white, and then they just have a picture of like a clan rally. Yeah, Yeah. and I'm like, I have seen those memes. Yeah, dang, (laughs) that's that's the kind of stuff that gets you deplatformed right there. (laughs) Wow, that's the kind of stuff where somebody will report it and. I'd already seen, because you know Liberty Memes post that, I'd already seen where, like, PolitiFact was saying that that's untrue. Like, you know, they rate that as pants on fire or whatever. That No, they didn't start. Well, I mean, the Democratic Party may not have started the Ku Klux Klan, but it was absolutely elements of of what are politically identified as Democrats, mm-hmm. because in, in that era, uh, of course, the Democratic Party was, was the party of of secession and mm-hmm. the civil war and all that. And I, yeah. and I don't want to get into all the historical context of it, but to say that, yeah, they, yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm just saying, mm-hmm. I'm just saying. So I'm, I didn't watch it, but I, I did see a couple of highlights of everybody. Everybody's like, you know, patting mm-hmm. themselves yeah. on the back because Trump said something about liberty and freedom yeah. and that being what the nation's about. And I mean, yeah, that's, that's cool. You know, that's, that's, that's a good phrase just in a vacuum. But when you realize who's saying it mm-hmm. and you realize where it's being said, like we're talking a freaking house floor at the state of the union coming from a U.S. president, yeah. that means it's meaningless. Like, dude, <laughs> come on. I can't – that's not – like, that's not a victory. Like, everybody is so hard up to to find little victories in the political sphere or in the mainstream. Like, ooh, there's us. No, that's not us. Yeah. That's that's It's them. They're just – in fact, the fact that you're so easily swayed into thinking that there's a light at the end of the tunnel because a politician said some flowery words tells me – I don't think you've been watching the gold standard with Alan Mosley. That's, That's right. for certain. Because yeah, you'd be way cynical. And, and a lot more skeptical. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And you wouldn't – That it would take more than that to get your allegiance. That's all I'm mm-hmm. saying. Yep. So – and outside of that, I, I know some people had mentioned they didn't, they didn't mention the deficit at all, which, of course, you know, why would they? Yeah. And really, why would they? Because both parties are totally okay with that. Yeah. Like, it's not going to be a point of contention on Capitol Hill because everybody, everybody on Capitol Hill is like, yeah, let's just let's just spend ourselves to prosperity. Why not? Yeah. So, so again, I'm not really super surprised about that. I mean, other than that, meh. Meh. You know, if I were president and I was and I was tasked to give a State of the Union, I would do two things. First is, is I would deliver it as a letter to Congress. I wouldn't actually do the whole video yeah. like oratory thing. I would do it old school because that's how that's how it used to be. The Put State it in the newspaper, used, yeah. It used to just be a letter to Congress. Yeah. Um, and the second thing I would do is it basically would only be like one sentence long. <laughs> it, it, I mean, it would basically be like because we're talking about the State of the Union. We're talking about what we're working on right now. So if I were president today, it would be um, – Legalize everything, release all nonviolent offenders from prison. Thank, thank you and God bless America. Like that, that I mean, that pretty much. That, <laughs> Alan for president. That's it. That's what yeah, we're that, do. I mean, that's pretty much would be my entire like. Your current. next up, twenty twenty. Uh, well, it. well, like you know, uh, <laughs> like completely defund the military, bring all the troops home from overseas, from everywhere uh-huh. outside of the yep. United States mm-hmm. in which they are currently stationed. And that's it. That's like yeah, that's it. That's that, that would be my entire speech, yeah. and people would be like, "Is that is that it?" Yeah. Like, uh, and it kind of makes me wonder if if people would be more taken aback by the content of what I said, or if more people would be taken aback of, "Wow, I've never seen a State of the Union that was forty five seconds long before." <laughs> <laughs> I would I would hope to make that the new normal. I yeah, really that'd would. be great. That would that I want that to be my lasting legacy as president. As mm-hmm. this guy came in here and just stomped all over our pomp and circumstance. <laughs> 
But but here's the thing though, is people kind of liked it. Yeah. People were kind of like, yeah, I can I can deal with yeah. that. Yeah. Now people can walk around and say, hey, did you watch the State of the Union? I did. I watched yeah. the whole thing. That's what that's, <laughs> that's what people will say. It's kind of like when you go to a wedding and they say, do you? Do you? You're married. It's good. Yeah, that's that's why you're a professional right there. You should actually officiate the ceremonies along with everything else you do. <laughs> oh, I already do too much. Yeah, but that, I liked that. That's, <laughs> like that's what that's what me and Anna yeah. should do right yeah. there. Do you? Do you? You're married. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. it. I like what was that, that the Princess Bride? What movie was that from? Oh no! Uh, wait, where was that from? Spaceballs. I get the two confused. They both have My, a stupid wedding scene in them. I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna admit something to you. <laughs> yes. So I physically feel pretty good today, but okay, my good. brain is sludge. Oh yeah, today's a good sludgy day, just kind of like yeah. the weather. And we were having some technical difficulties there with the weather, uh-huh. and there was a bird chirping outside. Oh, and just, dang bird! Ugh. Ugh. My tie's all shiny. It's really anyway. just an awful show, but <laughs> no, it's gonna it's get a lot better. Yes, it is. Because after the break, we're gonna be joined by our old friend of the Anarcho Christian podcast, anarchochristian.com, Stephen right. Rose. That's right. So stay where you are. Don't, don't stop. Ah, 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 ah. Yeah, we're gonna play a commercial. It's gonna be entertaining enough. It's only like thirty seconds, yeah, right? It's only it. like thirty seconds you long. It. Come on. You can handle this one. We'll be right back. Have you ever been talking politics with a friend and told, if you don't like it here, you should just move to Somalia? Well, ladies and gentlemen, from the sandy beaches of Mogadishu, Sherry and I bring you Postcards from Somalia, one of the newer products of Little Elm Productions, where we take on all of the fallacies of the people who say, if you don't like it, you can just get out. Your ad could be playing right now, reaching thousands of potential customers. Sadly, it's not, but it could be. Find out how to be an advertised sponsor for The Gold Standard with Alan Mosley. Email us at tgsalanmosley at gmail.com. Thank you for staying with us through the commercial break. It, that's a new thing for us is commercial breaks. And so if, if you thought that you were going to be able to stay away from commercial breaks by watching The Gold Standard, you thought wrong. But, hey, we got to do what we got to do, so here we are. But thank you for so much for joining us, and we are here with today's guest, who is making his second appearance on the show and is the host of the Anarcho-Christian Podcast, which you can find all of the awesome information, articles, really fantastic memes, which I want to point out, Blake mentions all the times. This guy posts some really spicy stuff on Twitter and Facebook, so you have to give him a like and a follow. You can find that at anarchochristian.com. Stephen Rose. Stephen, welcome back to the show. Yes, sir. Thanks for having me. What, when were you, were you here with us? When Was it in April or May of last year? Yeah, I think so. Mid-year, so, so, maybe summer. So it's, yeah, it's been almost a year since you've been yeah. on the show, which is weird that we're both still doing shows, because if we were self-respecting <laughs> libertarian, we'd have just given up by now and, <laughs> and moved on to other things. So, so what's been going on with Anarcho Christian in the last eight, ten, twelve months? Um, it's more of the same, you know, the spicy memes on social media and <laughs> and uh, articles and you know, sticking with the podcast. It's almost a year now, I think, mm-hmm. that we've been doing the podcast. That make the website two years. Um, but yeah, still going strong. So let me let me ask you this before we dig into today's topic. Um, we the the way you can tell that your show is growing and is getting out there is people start to send you hateful comments and posts <laughs> and messages. We've we've had a few of those lately. Have you have you have you run afoul of any of any uh, disagreements out there in the social media world and people who are happy to let you know that they don't like what you have to say? Yeah, absolutely, and I, I think. Um, the, one of one of the marks that I had heard of is uh, YouTube. Uh, mm-hmm. YouTube having the worst comments on there, and mm-hmm. uh, you know, once you, I guess you um, achieve you know negative YouTube, you know, comments, you know, you've made it. Oh yeah, for definitely for sure. We had uh, let's just in the last few weeks, so someone threatened to kill me. So we have that. Um, of course, I mean, you, you always get the, if you don't like it, why don't you just leave? And To which I always say, if, if, pay for my ticket and I'll go. Like, you <laughs> buy me a villa on some island somewhere and I'll, I'll take my leave. Um, we had, I had a lady send me private messages attacking my girlfriend, so that was pretty cool. Um, yeah, I hadn't even told Blake about that. We'll get into that wow. later. That was a good one. And so all that tells me is, is hey, we're, get, we're moving up in the that's world. Right. Yeah, that's right. So, 
Stephen, I had, I had contacted you a little while back because I wanted to talk about this concept of the remnant, which um, maybe in, its, in, its, in, in that form, in, in the maybe political or philosophical angle, comes from the Albert J. Nock essay, Isaiah's Job. But of course, that, it's, that is predated by a biblical story, which I'm going to let you talk to our, our users about. Uh, for a few moments. Uh, tell us a little bit about what, what exactly is the remnant and where, where does that lexicon come from? Yeah, uh, and I appreciate you having me on to talk about it. Um, you know, where your listeners may have heard it before would be, you know, speeches by Ron Paul or mm-hmm. Tom Woods, and it sure. pops up here and there, um, usually as, you know, referenced in somebody's speech or you know, or a book or something uh, in, in the libertarian world. And, you know, of course, where, where they're referencing it from is uh, Albert Knox's essay, Isaiah's Job. Mm-hmm. And it, it was written in 1945. And um, it's, a, it's an interesting, it's a short, very short essay. And it's an, it kind of sprung from a conversation that he had with someone else, an, an unnamed economist that he had. And um, this economist um, laid out, you know, whatever they were talking about. He doesn't get real specific, but he, he laid out um, a very thorough, um, you know, understanding of, of something. Um, and he says, now this is my charge. I've got to just spread it to the world. I've got to tell everybody about it. And so Nock goes over you know, a thought that he had, you know, that sprung from that. And um, he goes over with this gentleman, you know, the story of Isaiah from the Bible. Mm -hmm. And um, this idea of, you know, having this message for everybody, but not everybody is going to hear it or to hear it. Uh, But it will be important for a a select amount, you know, the remnant. Mm -hmm. And, um, that is usually what is uh, referenced in, you know, whenever someone brings it up, uh, they're referencing Nock, and then Nock is explaining in this essay, you know, who the remnant is and how that really applies, not just, you know, in this biblical story, but using that and kind of applying it to anything that if you have a, you know, something that's pressing on you that you got to tell everybody, and you got to be uh, evangelistic about it, you know, he's, he's going over, you know, what your you know what it is your story or or what it is that you have to say you know how it applies to the masses versus the remnant now that's i think that's a concept that we're going to have to to zero in a little bit so people understand that the 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 separation from the masses and the remnant and so to help people understand so who exactly are you talking to and why, why, why is it not the masses? Like, I thought that's what we're supposed to do, right? We're supposed to go out and shout from the rooftops what we believe. And is, is, that, not, is that not the strategy? So, so tell us where we're wrong there. Yeah, so the, the real distinction with, uh, you know, speaking to the masses or the remnant is, and Nock lays this out wonderfully, where you, if you speak to the masses, you need to water down your message. Mm-hmm. Um, to, you know, for everybody, to make everybody happy, to get everybody on your side. And um, it really does come down to a quality versus quantity sort of, you know, conversation on how your message is going to go out there. Are you going to, you know, preach it in, you know, all truth and or are you going to water it down just so you make everybody happy and you're focused on the majority of the people and, and just bringing everybody in or the, the remnant, you know, the people who are really going to listen and uh, understand your, what your message is. There's, there's almost, it's, it's almost that there's something romantic about identifying as a part of that remnant. And, and, it, and it, in, in some ways it gives people that community and that camaraderie that I think all human beings seek for. But at the same time, it also seems kind of... I don't know if self-defeating is quite the right phrase, but it also seems like a just acquiescing to the notion that it's that taking our our views, our philosophy, and going quote mainstream with it is just not a realistic outcome. Would you say that that's fair? 
Uh, I'm sorry, you broke up there, right there at the uh, last part. Well, it's just saying that, that it's, it, it almost seems like it's, even though it's romantic to be a part of that community, it, also, it almost seems like it's, a, it's, it's like acquiescing to this concept that being able to take our philosophy, our li libertarianism, and going mainstream with it, that, that, that that's just not realistic. Would you say that that's fair to say? Yeah, um, you know, there's always that that risk that you're going to make people upset, you know, with your message, or that you're going to get everybody, you know, on board. And um, I think that we do with the libertarian message, or even with being evangelical about anything or faith, um, where you can see the parallel here that Knock has made. Um, you know, you're going to make people angry, or you're going to get people on your side. Uh, but I think not watering down the message is the important part. And, and we do feel you know, a sense of camaraderie when we are around people that do think just like us. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, which it's not a bad thing. A lot of times that's kind of, um, you know, there, you could use a derogatory term like an echo chamber or something mm -hmm. like that. But there, there definitely is you know, this camaraderie or family in that as well. Yeah. Now, you've said a couple of times now that phrase of, of watering down the message, uh, and it seems like even, even people who are very politically active, even people, I would dare say even people who are, are, are a part of the typical left-right, left, right, Democrat, Republican, you know, echo chamber themselves, it seems like a lot of people understand, though, that, like, generic politics definitely national politics like that's 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 what you're talking about right like that's the watered down message that we're trying to avoid because really who are you who who's who's latching on if that's something that resonates them with them then then who, what kind of people are are following you i mean what is that yeah there's really no value there right you know mm -hmm. with just um you know speaking in these generalities and you know the the current, you know, national discussion just is nothing profitable comes from it. It's just uh, people that are angry on one side or supporting another side that, you know, doesn't really have anyone's best interest, just their own mm -hmm. uh, in mind. And uh, yeah, there, there's not a lot there as far as the, the quality of it. It's it's ironic that we're we're talking about this. So this as as of this filming, we're filming this the day after the State of the Union address was just delivered by Donald Trump. And it's you want to talk about just this 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 grandstanding, just this you know, just this paying homage to the state with with the, the, everyone circled around and the flags and everything, and yet for for all of that opportunity to speak to the masses, as we would say. It's it's just nothing. It's just it's just words. There's no there's no value, as you put it. I mean, what is am, am I am I just being a cynical jerk, or would you agree with that? No, unfortunately, I, I do agree. You know, we heard a lot of words like liberty and freedom, and yeah. you know, stuff like that. You know, it sounds great. It looks like a really nice uh, quote or a soundbite, but there's no value there. It's uh, I mean, we know that. The way that this country is, especially with the, the soundbite that's going around a lot this morning, uh, you know, about coercion and socialism and things like that. Well, this it sounds great, but we know that every day we live under this country that runs on coercion. Yeah, I want to I'm going to pull up here uh, really quick. Uh, a, a few questions that we had from our good friend Michael Clark. So this is going to be, we're reviving Mike's, Mike's Minute, the segment Mike's Minute, Blake. Okay. Uh, and then also I have a quote from Robert Higgs, but I'm going to save his to last. Uh, so, so Michael had asked, uh, Knox says in the, in the essay, when everything has gone completely to the dogs, they, the remnant, are the ones who will come back and build up a new society. And, and Mike says, you know, I, I'm skeptical that that's the case. I worry that if the U.S. government fell tomorrow, another would soon replace it that's just as bad, if not worse, than the one that fell. Are you more optimistic? Uh, no, I, I'm really not. Um, now, I think that we can have, if there was some sort of, um, you know, event where this government that we currently have, you know, kind of collapses under its own weight and mm -hmm. oppression, um, I'm sure that, that we could could see a space that would be better than what we have now. Um, I think that 
you could even say that with um, with our current government. You know, they sought to overthrow you know the the oppression and tyranny, and um, for some, there it was better for a mm-hmm. while. Uh, so I mean, I, I'm sure you're going to be able to find those those moments and uh, events in any sort of change. But um, also much more skeptical, where I think that um, you know you're going to have people that are going to that are going to rise to the top to you know take that take that control back over you know and, yeah. and you are stuck in the situation where it's the meet your new king same as the old king yeah so so just a, a kind of more of on a on a personal question for you when when you think of your I, I, I don't really like the word activism but when you think of your strategy for for promoting the the philosophy and, and the values that you cherish uh, I mean, do you even bother to look at the national landscape or even the state landscape for that matter? Or, or, or is it all the way down to just local community or even your immediate family? Like where, where is your focus and where do you think that you kind of draw the line? Uh, I personally do pay attention to the national stuff. I guess like watching a train wreck, you know, or <laughs> why somebody would want to watch. Um, you know, wrestling, where you know it's fake, but I guess you're being entertained by it anyways. Sure. Um, so I do I do pay attention to that. I watch that. As far as the message that goes out from there, um, I think it's similar to what Nock talks about even in this essay where, um, you know, let's comment on it, and hopefully that message gets out there to the remnant that'll, that'll hear it. Mm-hmm. So I'm not out there... Um, you know, really chanting, you know, anti, you know, Trump or anti government things, you know, really, but putting out a message that is different than what it is or commenting on it, pointing out the contradictions. Mm -hmm. And um, I feel confident that, you know, the remnant in this, in this case, they'll hear it and uh, they'll, you know, they'll, uh, they'll listen. So you, you just said uh, that you, you feel confident that the remnant will hear it. Um, that's that. That's something that I wrestle with. I I, I really do because I mean we you know we do the show you know we I, I write articles we we do the things that we do because we we're, we're passionate about it. Uh, I mean I, I love doing it. I love doing a show, but we're we're passionate about what we believe. We wanna we wanna share it with people. We wanna talk about it, but I. Do, do you ever do you ever have those just just ugh, moments where you you look at a comment section or you or you overhear a conversation at the grocery store and it's just I mean it's just oppressively the opposite right like it's just over the top not what you subscribe to and you just think man how do you how do you get through that noise yeah I, honestly like every day you know there's something whether it's from the left or the right you know mm-hmm. um, whether we're talking about um, the Bernie Sanders crowd or the Trump crowd, there's always something, you know, even after the State of the Union, you know, the, the praise that's being, you know, uh, given to, to Trump for the, for the speech that, you know, it, it does, it's a little disheartening, but, you know, mm-hmm. I guess we just got to stick with it. And we know that our, our message may not um, immediately be taken in and, and, um, and loved, but uh, for myself, you know, I wasn't always in this position where I was just as much a, a neocon and as the rest of them. So eventually, I do believe the message will sink in to people, you know, who are who are listening. Now, so that's that's interesting, and, and I believe we might have talked about that the last time you were on. That you, so you, you at one time were kind of a part of that that neocon crowd, and you made the transition to liberty uh, as as a primary virtue. Do you? So when you evaluate kind of your own journey, do you try to? emulate that when you share things with other people like do you try to do, do you try to talk to them in language that they can understand or do you just hit them you know hit them hard with with liberty in the hopes that well it's 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 a matter of who's listening it's not a matter of this one person i i think it, it kind of varies of course who you're talking to but a lot of times yeah i think taking into account where they're coming from um is going to be the best way to approach that. Mm-hmm. Um, 
you need to just get hit with the truth. You know, there were there are situations where where I needed that, and I did, and it really you know it kind of shook me out of whatever position I had on you know on whatever topic. But a lot of times, I think uh, you know if you're talking to someone who considers himself a conservative, show them the truth about the terms liberty and freedom, mm -hmm. words that we use. And if you're talking to someone on the uh, you know left end of the spectrum, you know point out exactly how voluntary you know interactions can lift people up out mm -hmm. of the, those positions that they're concerned with poverty or or just someone needing help and they believe that people on the you know right side of things uh, don't care about them you know so i think um when you do get in and, and try to di uh, correctly define some of those words that they hold on to um, I think those are usually the best ways to approach it. And like I said, it may not happen immediately, but, um, you know, eventually, you know, those words can sink in. Now, the, the, I feel like this is probably an interesting segue. So this is a this is a topic that we've debated with a few different guests on the show is specific terminology and how useful it really is when it's not being used appropriately in different areas and so like for instance do you do you when you tell when someone asks you like if i were to say to you right now so so steven what do you personally identify as uh from from a political or a philosophical standpoint do you use the word libertarian or do you use a different word um sometimes i'll it, it depends on who i'm talking to you and honestly I, I do use the term anarchist just for the mm -hmm. shock value yeah um because i i mean i know that the way, of course, that that's been misused and mm -hmm. and redefined, and you know, I do like to use it for you know kind of the shock value, and then it gets into a great conversation typically of, about what an anarchist is and how that's been you know defined this way and that. So well, usually I use that, but also I'll use uh, there are a lot of words that I think of as synonymous, and that is you know small l libertarian mm -hmm. and uh, voluntarist. I think that those are synonymous terms. Yeah. And, with libertarian, you'll see a lot of people of the minarchist variety, but um, I do believe that when you follow it through to you know this idea of maximal, or maximum liberty, that you're going to find yourself as an, an anarchist. Well, it's just you, you, you probably know where I'm going with this. It's like so just last night, for instance, I know every, everyone's giving uh, Trump a pat on the back for that one statement that he made about this, this country, you know, being founded or whatever in, on liberty and freedom and we're not going to be a socialist country and things like that. And I mean, sure, it's, it's a good quote, but I mean, considering where it's coming from, it's, it's just words, right? You, you don't really feel a lot of value there, as you put it. So I, I feel like now it's, it's just all that much more important for us to remind ourselves that when, when people who, in our view, are abjectly authoritarian in nature are parading those words around to applause, it almost kind of makes you, I, I don't know if cringe is the right word, but it almost kind of like gives you pause of, well, we got to figure out a way to brand these principles so that they understand that we're just, we're not just another right winger. We're not just another left winger. Like, you know, if you, you know, I, I, I have no doubt because as much as we love our community, you know, libertarians don't exactly make up like 80% of the population. It's probably more like two and a half tops. I, I bet there's a lot of people out there that voted for Obama and in their minds, they're probably thinking, I love liberty. There's probably yeah. a lot of people out there that voted for Bush and in their minds, they're thinking, I love liberty. So I, I that that's why I feel like there has to be there has to be a better way. Like there has to be a better moniker or identifier that we can use so that people understand that this this is abjectly different than that. Yeah, and, and honestly, I don't know what the right answer is cause, because I like you, I you know I, I shake my head when I when I hear those statements. You know, you know, to standing ovation. Um, and even a lot of libertarians are holding on to that soundbite this morning, mm -hmm. you know, as if it was some sort of um, victorious, you know, yeah. attack against the socialist left. Uh, but I, I think that it actually does a greater disservice that we have these words that are just uh, paraded along by the, the conservative and the right wing. Mm -hmm. you know, 
side of things, uh, deploying those words to both sides. And it makes uh, the people on the right that are holding on to these words like liberty so, so tightly that they, they don't even know what it looks like anymore. So I, I think I agree with you. I, just purely from a branding standpoint, uh, I'm, I'm concerned that libertarian, thanks to, our, thanks to our friends in the big L libertarian crowd and, and their champions such as Bill Weld, who I heard is now a Republican again. Imagine, imagine my surprise. Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> But did he I, promise, you know, to like stay a libertarian forever? From what I, uh, so from what I understand, he like during the last election cycle, when of course he was going on national media talking about how awesome Hillary Clinton is for some weird reason, he he apparently had made some statements along the lines of, "Well, you know, I'm here, like I'm here to stay, like we're in yeah. it to win it," as Hillary would say. I'm I'm a libertarian. <laughs> this is what I identify as. I've learned so much. But even then, you're you're just you're hopelessly light naive political types who are saying, oh, he's, he's one of us, like he's come around to our line of thinking and, and all this. I mean, yeah, he, he had made statements along those lines, and then now it, that's, you know, so, I mean, for one, he's a politician, so why anyone, why right. anyone is putting their, this is, this is exactly why it's so awesome that Stephen Rose is with us, because cause I'm, I'm, not a, I'm, not a, I'm not really a religious person, and you, you have a lot more gravitas in that field than I do, but I feel like you're, you're the perfect person to, to, sh- to shake the angry stick at people who are putting that level of faith in men like Bill Weld. Yeah. Yeah, and that's really, you know, part of that message that we just try to put out there is to show those, you know, those contradictions in our terminologies and, um, you know, and to bring this back around, you know, that the remnant's going to hear it and they're going to say, oh, yeah, they're going to wake up, you know. I, I know I do, you know. Yeah. So, Stephen, before we go, what, is there anything exciting coming up for Anarcho-Christian? Uh, just uh, sticking with the, the podcast and trying to, to really build on that. Uh, I've learned a lot over the last year and um, you know, just trying to build on the podcast and make it, make it bigger, uh, bringing on different uh, writers and contributors to the mm-hmm. blog. I think uh, this year you're going to see uh, an increase in you know, our, our output on both the blog and the podcast and hopefully notice an increase in quality. <laughs> well, that's 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 that sounds like us. We we hope hope people notice an increase yeah. in quality. That's going to be our little tagline now. <laughs> so everybody, you definitely need to be following Anarcho Christian on Twitter and Facebook and, and going to anarchochristian.com because let let me tell you, I now I have shared a number of memes from those pages because even even though I don't come from things from a religious angle, I got to tell you. So sometimes sometimes Stephen, I see you post things and it's and I haven't and I haven't looked at the comments or anything yet and, and I'll look at the image and I just immediately think oh someone's mad <laughs> like so, someone someone there's going to be some right winger who maybe he you know he thought he liked you that this yeah. is what we run into is that maybe the first thing they ever saw you say or do is something they agree with and so yeah. they think they like you and then and then you send something down the pipe that just I immediately think, oh, there's going to yeah. be there's going to be some boomer aged retired coast guard, uh, you know. I I don't I don't I don't wanna I don't wanna offend anybody, but you know. I mean we're in the Bible belt here, so there's gonna be some Baptist or Church of Christer who's gonna say, Well, I disagree one percent with what you said, therefore you're just a piece of crap. You're literally oh. the worst person that ever lived. I'm, yeah, I'm, we'll get it from the right and the left. You oh know. yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, Stephen, we're going to get you out of here on this one. Is a hot dog a sandwich? You know, I've been listening to your show, <laughs> and uh, I, I thought I really have thought about it I, because I've never looked at it as a sandwich. But by the definitions that I can come up with, and I, I would have to agree. Yeah. There, there you is. have it. That's there it why is. Steven's on the show. Yep. So if, if you're if you're out there listening to this in the ether and you're thinking, well, I want to go on the gold standard. Why is Steven on twice and I haven't been on at all? It's because Steven understands that a hot dog <laughs> is a sandwich and you don't. That's why. <laughs> you, uh, I've come around. <laughs> <laughs> Steven, thank you so much for being on the show, man. We appreciate it. All right. Thanks. Thanks for having me. Good
Guys, we will be right back after this break. Hey, did you see the uh, playoff games last weekend? Oh, you're into the sports ball game. Sports Ball with Mike Meharry and Alan Mosley. Sportsballpodcast.com Sports Ball is not a libertarian sports show. It's a sports show done by a couple of libertarians. For when you need your bread and circuses. Your ad could be playing right now, reaching thousands of potential customers. Sadly, it's not, but it could be. Find out how to be an advertised sponsor for The Gold Standard with Alan Mosley. Email us at tgsalanmosley at gmail.com. Welcome back to the show. Uh, thanks so much for being with us. I know, I know a lot of people probably at the end of the interview segment, they're like, that's it, right? No, no, there's more. But there's more. Yeah, because this is the best part. This is the best part. You know why this is the best part? Because this is the part of the show where I say, so Blake, what did you learn today? Uh, well, uh, I know the story of The Remnant. I know it very yeah. well. Um, and uh, there's a lot more to it, and I encourage you, those of you who want to learn more about it, go and read the things that we talked about today. You know, it's Isaiah, what is it, Isaiah 10, 20 in the Bible. But, uh, and of course, the other gentleman that you mentioned who wrote the story. Albert J. Nock, Alan Isaiah, Nock, right? Isaiah's job, mm -hmm. yes. Yep, <clears throat> yep. And um, if you are the remnant, be the remnant. Mm -hmm. Be the remnant. Mm -hmm. Being the remnant is what matters, you know, mm -hmm. because... The message falls deaf on so many people that are just kind of blinded to their own notion of the way they think things should be, you know. But the remnant knows what's going on. I'm pretty blinded by my tie's reflection in the monitor right there. Will you stop it with the tie? I can't even see. I'm going to get a pair of scissors and cut the thing off. No. Don't yeah. Do I like this tie. You would not. Is that a Jerry Garcia tie? A what? Do you know who Jerry Garcia was? Yeah. Remember why this? Why would I yeah. have? Because the guy made the best ties in the world. <sighs> <laughs> At least that's what they tell me. But look, I don't wear ties. You, you know what? I'm, I'm glad someone decided to message us on YouTube saying, you should dress nicer for your set. Yeah. So now, now, they can, now they can direct their ire at you instead of me. I don't need to wear a suit. Like, he yeah. does. I'm not going to do it. Yeah, but see, now you're, now you're on-camera talent. So. And now I look completely terrible compared to you. No, just, just bring a sports jacket. A sports jacket? And just wear it over whatever it is you're wearing. That's what you should do. <sighs> I don't put put on jacket. a tie and a sports jacket over I'm your gonna, polo. How about I put a tie on a polo? Yeah. There you go. I like it. That's, that's, that's dressing up that's for me, trendy. son. That's, right there. That's how you reach the remnant right there. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. That's right. Because the remnant would know only, only someone as socially backwards as that can be a libertarian. So, that's right. That's true. I'm working on a neck beard. I, I, I hope, before, before we're all done here, yeah. I hope that our show goes down in history as the show that made fun of its target audience the most. Because, hey, you know what? We love you. Yeah. I, and that's what it comes down to. Yeah, to be fair, because I, I, I have had people message and say, man, you, you give everybody a hard time. It's that, but if for people that know me, and, and you've been watching the show, so you, you know me yeah, a little bit. Yeah, yeah. People that I don't, I genuinely don't like, like I actually don't want to converse with, I don't, I don't make fun of them because yeah. I, because I, I don't talk to them. No. They, they're just, they're yeah. non existent. We're, we're kind of like your big brother. You know, we love you, but we still, you know, give you a wedgie every now and then and mm -hmm. swirly and other Mm -hmm. Things, yeah, I like that. Throw a cat at you. This show's Claws. dead. No, it's not. Yeah, no, this show's no, dead. No, as soon as you, dead. as soon as you equate us with, we're kind of like your big brother. That's it. No one's ever watched this show ever again. <laughs> Guys, thank you so much for tuning in to another episode of the Gold Standard. If you want to follow us on social media, you can do so at Facebook.com/slash TGS Alan Mosley. Go on there, drop us a line to let us know what you think of the show, so we can ban you. Uh, my Twitter is at Alan M Mosley. That's A L A N because A L L E N is not even a person. That's an other person. They're they're yeah. gonna get in the boxcar. No. A L A N M M O S L E Y at Alan M Mosley. But you don't have to do any of that. You can just go to our website. That's right. Which is the gold standard podcast.com. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and it has it has all the links on there. Yeah. It has the donation. It has our social media. Mm -hmm. It has the articles that I've written that That's have right. been published on various mm -hmm. platforms. And it has all the episodes there as well. Mm -hmm. So like what there's really want? no excuse. Yeah. And and we really want to hound really want to drive this one home that we appreciate our viewers. We appreciate mm -hmm. the people that have encouraged us along the way that, that uh, encourage us and inspire us to continue on doing what we do. But guys, Facebook sucks. 
Facebook sucks, and, and Facebook does not share content like ours very willingly. So mm -hmm. what you need to do is you need to go onto there, and you need to like you need to subscribe to us on whatever mm -hmm. your favorite podcasting yeah. platform choice is. Help us out and you, share And it. you need to share those yeah. things. Sharing it is what makes a difference. Sharing those mm -hmm. things is how you reach the remnant. That's right. And that's how yeah. we're going to get the remnant to pull together. Yeah, and give us money. Get the remnant to pull together and give us money. Well, he's... That's, that's what we do it for. That's not true. If we were doing this for money, we would just I'd just be a yeah. neocon. Yeah. I'd just talk about how we need to go to Venezuela and <clears throat> take over. And yeah. then and then we'd make more money. But that's for another show. But that's not what we're about. No. We're 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 about libertarianism on that's this right. show. Mm -hmm. Even though there's no money in it. <laughs> but you can all change that. No, that's why, you know, there's the remnant, you know. Yeah, exactly. That's why. Yeah, yeah. We're trying. Thank you so much, and we will see you <laughs> next week.